Hey, church family, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for joining us for today's devotional. This week, we are learning all about worship, and today's scripture is a popular story in the New Testament about Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well. So let's read together. John 4, 23 through 26 says, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. And we are picking up mid-story here with Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman at the well. And Jesus is breaking all kinds of social norms to be talking to this woman. So first, Jesus intentionally chooses to go through Samaria, which Samaria for the Jews was a place that you don't go. Um, The Samaritans were hated. They were seen as uh, social outcasts um, and religious outcasts. And Jesus chooses to walk through Samaria on his journey. So that's number one. Number two, Jesus is talking to a woman. And this was uh, social taboo. You were not allowed as a Jewish man and even as a Jewish rabbi to speak to a woman. So Jesus is breaking a cultural barrier here by talking to this woman. Um, And in later verses, we realize that not only is she just a woman, but she's an outcast woman in her community because of the choices that she's made. So it's just amazing that Jesus chooses to sit down and speak to this woman. And so Jesus pretty much is just reading her mail and telling all of her deepest, darkest secrets to her. And she says, you must be a prophet to know all this about me. And she even brings up worship and asks Jesus because she thinks he's a prophet. She says, where is the proper place to worship? Because the Samaritans say that we're supposed to worship at this mountain, but the Jews say that we can only worship in Jerusalem. And I love how Jesus just corrects her theology here and says the location of her worship no longer longer matters. And um, verse 23 says that the true worshipers, and I want you to underline this, true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. And so many times, I know that I can do this, you know, focus on the physical aspects of worship, you know, oh, I can only really get into worship if I'm, you know, at church on a Sunday, and, um, or I can only really get into worship if I'm in my quiet time at home, you know, or even the, the types of songs that we sing for worship, you know, uh, when a fast song comes, you know, that's when I'm going to jump up and down and clap my hands, or, you know, if I really want to get into worship in a slow song, I've got to have the lights down low, you know, and I'm going to lift my hands, you know, we can just get caught up in in um, the logistics of worship. Um, And all that serves a purpose. But here, Jesus is saying that the Father seeks out worship that originates in our souls and comes from a place deep within us. And it's a true longing and crying out to God, just like a child cries out for their parent. You know, we're crying out for our Father. And God's not looking at what we're doing or where we're doing it, but instead he's looking at our heart. And uh, the Samaritan woman tells Jesus, she says, oh, well, one day the Messiah is going to come and he's going to explain all of this to us. And Jesus tells her that he is the one that they've been waiting for. And this truth truly transforms her life. She then, after she uh, finished talking to Jesus, she then goes into the city and starts testifying about him. And so many people come to know Jesus because of this woman's testimony. And uh, John 4, 39, which is a little uh, bit further down in the story, says, many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. And who knows that it would be really scary to sit down next to Jesus and him just tell you everything you ever did. I know that that would be terrifying for me. But God's truth truly transforms lives. And we can see that here in this story. So I just want to leave you with two thoughts as we close today. Number one, God wants to have relationship with you, and he welcomes you into his presence. Sometimes, you know, we can have trouble going to the Father with our worries or cares or doubts, you know, because we feel like, oh, God doesn't have time for me, or I've made too many mistakes. You know, he he doesn't really want to know what's going on in my life. But I love that this story 
shows how intentional Jesus was, that he went out of his way to find this woman um, who he wasn't even really allowed to speak with, and he sits down with her, he tells her about her life, and tells her that he is the Messiah. And, you know, and it also says in this uh, story about how he is the living water, you know, that, that um, she'll never be thirsty again. It's just a beautiful story. And, and she, her whole life is transformed because Jesus chose to sit down with her. And I just love that he has this story for us so that we can understand that that's for us too, you know, that he wants to sit down and tell us things about ourselves and show us his glory, show us his love and his mercy. So that's number one. Jesus truly wants relationship with you. And number two, true worship, and I want you to write this down. True worship, it's not a ritual, it's a revelation. True worship is not a ritual, but a revelation. And, you know, I know it's easy to get in with worship, you know, oh, well, I've got my ritual. You know, I come to church on Sunday and I got to hear my three songs. You know, I got to hear Pastor Doug sing and I got to do all that. I got to get my coffee and that's my ritual. That's my worship. Or, you know, in the morning when I wake up, I play my worship music and that's my ritual. And all those things are great. But true worship is not just about the ritual. It's about the revelation. It's the revelation of who Jesus is and what he has done for you. That's where true worship comes from. It's that place deep within us where we realize that we are broken and empty without him and that he has done so much for us that we just want to truly worship and give him our lives. And, you know, true worship, it's really, it's not about us, but it's all about God and giving glory to him. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this awesome story that shows us that you care about the least of these. You care about you cared about this Samaritan woman enough to change her life, God, and you knew that when you spoke to her, God, and you transformed her from the inside out, that she was going to go out and share your good news, Lord. And so I thank you that that story can encourage us to do the same, that as we learn more about you, as we sit in your presence, as we truly worship you in the spirit and in truth, as this scripture says, that we're going to come to know you in a new way and we're going to worship you like never before, that it's not going to just be about ritual, God, but it's going to be about revelation. So we just thank you for that truth. We thank you that you are always available to us and we can come to you whenever we have need, Lord. We love you so much and we give today to you in Jesus' name. Amen.